Hi, and here we are. Like George, welcome to to this interview. Welcome to this. What do you call it? <laughs> I am so excited to be live on yeah. my Facebook page. Welcome. Yeah. I just want to invite everybody in here right now. We've got a few minutes before, like I said, this is going to start at 11 Pacific Standard Time. Right. But we are so excited because we have our special friend and guest. He is yeah. a wealth and oh, he's just an expert at so many things. I want to welcome Dr. George Grant. He's not only a scientist, he's a chemist. He is a health and wellness expert. He is, has done so many things in his life. He's an author, but I just want to welcome you, Dr. Grant. Welcome. We pleased and blessed to have you on our show today. I had a really interesting thought. Yes. We, Our friend Lotus Roche, you know what Lotus always says, come on in, come on in. So, <laughs> yeah. Lotus, if you're here, come on in. We want to invite you to our table with Dr. <laughs> yeah. George Grant. Sorry, George, you were going to start speaking. Carry on. Thank you so much, Ruth and Robert. I call them the R and R happy couple. They are amazing, <laughs> amazing couple. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes, and uh, so happy to be on your show. So blessed to get to know you for many, many years. And uh, I'd love to share with your audience today about start with my story. Yes. I actually inherited very bad genes from both parents and both grandparents. Oh. In fact, my mother. She passed away in her early 40s, 41 to be exact, wow. Wow, wow. from heart disease, yeah, heart attack and diabetes and, and so on. And my dad, early 60s. So I have never seen my grandparents. I know they died in their 50s. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I am at age 18 with no mom and um, wondering exactly what, what's the future is holding for me at that time. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was almost like pretty well about 50 plus years ago. I'm seven. I actually turned seventy last May. Wow! So, you look yes, like I, not even. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm the first one to outlive the last parents and grandparents for about ten or twelve years. Wow! So I'm hoping my my goal is to actually live till one one one. That's my goal to help more people. It's mm -hmm. not that I enjoy, you know, just uh, living, uh, you know, just the life. But I want to help more people. As you know, I, I have a passion to help people. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we love that too. Yeah, exactly. I know. So I wondered if there is anything that I can do at age eighteen, but I did not know what I know today. You know uh, what I can do to prevent this problem, and luckily there's a science called epigenetics that actually turn your bad genes off and your good genes on. So it's not your genes that determine your destination. If you have as bad genes as mine from parents, and grandparents, and grand grand grandparents. There's always hope to live till 70 and beyond without any disease, without any, any problems, if you take care of your health and wellness. Right. So when we did the academyofwellness.com about, uh, my goodness, 1980, 1981, uh, so it's almost like, my goodness, 40 years now, right? 40 years. I've been doing this for 40 years, four decades. So we tell people how to prevent heart disease, how to prevent diabetes, how to prevent dying from bypass. In fact, I help clients who have 99% clogged arteries, and they called me at this hostel, the doctor that bypassed the bypass. So we try to bypass that bypass. There is no need for bypass right now because I believe, Ruth and Robert, that prevention is better than intervention. I believe that self-care is better than crisis care. Yes. Absolutely. The best medication in the world is to teach people how not to need it because <laughs> we do not need medications because Every medication has side effects. In fact, I tell my clients as a pharmacologist, as toxicologist, before you take any medication in your mouth, search first, what are the side effects? Yes. Yes. And if the actual risk of is taking the meds exceeds the benefits, then think about it. I never tell anybody to stop meds. I never tell anybody about the danger of medication. All I tell them is to educate them about potential side effects. So mm -hmm. I, want, I want them to know what happened when they take statin medication for cholesterol. First of all, they're going to find they're going to have fatty liver because this source something called coenzyme Q10. It's going to affect your memory because it has direct effect on the brain. It's going to affect the heart. So you're dealing with something like cholesterol, which you actually we need. If it's LDL cholesterol, which is a bad cholesterol, then we can actually reverse this to make it HDL, higher HDL and lower LDL with diet and exercise. We yeah. do not need statin medication. So I, get, I tell them, okay, go to check 
for the Zocor, Lipitor, the statin medication, and see what it, and they come back to me and said, oh my God, my doctor never had the time to tell me this. It's not that they don't know. Of course they know. They, they study no, no. pharmacology and toxicology as I did, but yeah. they just don't have time. They only have about seven or 10 minutes window. That's in Ontario. I'm not sure about British Columbia. Same. Maybe your doctor there have more time than uh, doctors in Ontario. No. <laughs> but how can in 10 minutes somebody solve, somebody would take in 10, 20 or, or more medications? How, mm -hmm. in, how, how in the world, I don't think even Albert Einstein can do this. <laughs> like in, no. in 10 minutes, the, the, like, there's no human mind can solve. Like I, I spend with my with my clients minimum one hour, and I don't have like longer than that to spend with them because it's their time, also it's my time. Right. But in one hour, I just get to know them. I get to know to do the biofeedback test in about 20, 25 minutes, and I get to ask them about their lifestyle. Because I believe uh, Ruth and Robert that I am FM LM is the answer to all of our ailments. What's I am? Integrative medicine. The best of Western medicine and the best of Eastern medicine combined together. Yes, I agree with you. To combine them together, not just a pill for every ill, not just here is a prescription in seven minutes. We 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 deal with IM integrative medicine. We deal with FM functional medicine. The, the how healthy is your gut? If you have a healthy gut, you have a healthy brain. In fact, our gut is the is the first brain. This yeah. is the second brain that controls, uh, you know, everything. The gut controls dementia. It controls hypertension, diabetes, inflammation. In fact, if you look at inflammation, <clears throat> not just for arthritis, not just for heart disease, not just for diabetes, not for dementia. Inflammation affects every single disease we have in the pharmacopoeia. Okay. Right. So I, I deal with inflammation naturally, not with medications. Yeah. Not operation so when i tell my clients our motto is we care we serve we educate the key here is to educate we do not medicate we do not operate we do not vaccinate we do not irradiate we do not irritate so basically just a full disclaimer i'm not a physician i'm not a medical doctor i've been trained in in so many areas uh, my doctorate first doctorate was on integrative in sorry it was in a stress management from University of Toronto. Second doctor was on integrative medicine. And the third doctorate was on humanitarian medicine. So with the three doctors, three masters, the three bachelors that I had, I'm helping clients now to get to know how lifestyle, how the gut health can affect their destination. How can they actually reduce the dependency on medications? And how can they, you, you can reverse any disease? I have done this with 10,000 clients in Canada. And 10,000 clients overseas, across US, across the Caribbean, across Europe, to show that we can reverse high blood pressure, diabetes, which I had a family history of, naturally, without depending on any medication or any operation. I've done this with so many clients, as you know, uh, Ruth and Robert. Yes, yes, and that is just amazing. So why don't we first, like you said, uh, what was it? You had IM with integrative, FM is functional, and when there was one more. Okay, so I am integrative medicine, yeah. FM functional medicine, and LM, which is actually more important than the other two, is lifestyle medicine. Exactly. Lifestyle medicine, like when you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, how many, you know, foods, healthy food have you eaten? How many vegetables have you consumed? How many fruits have you consumed? How many fast food have you consumed? <laughs> how many coffee or soda have you consumed? <laughs> like how much water have you consumed by the way i want to share with your viewers and your listeners to go to academyofwellness.com which you have it there underneath yeah. go to wellness iq so when you go to wellness iq you can with 10 questions you can determine the health of the individual when i did this for robert almost like my goodness was it two years three years ago robert now almost two years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, he he was very healthy. Uh, he was a former RCMP officer. So obviously, uh, by the way, when I was working for Health Canada, I worked with, uh, I taught RCMP officer about the health and safety aspect. They were our <laughs> largest client in Ottawa, uh, the RCMP force. And they all fit. They, all, they actually, well, just like Robert, they all fit. <laughs> anyway, so when, I, when the Robert did the wellness IQ, I said, we can fine tweak this li little bit here because he needed to lose maybe 10 pounds, 15 pounds to be slim and slimmer and trimmer. I went with him through the water, through the eating more vegetables, through not eating late, 7 p.m. zip right. time. Yeah. 7 a.m. breakfast, 7 p.m. is dinner, healthy dinner, healthy breakfast, nothing in between. Like uh, we call it intermittent, semi-intermittent fasting. 
for 12 hours fasting, which actually produces autophagy, which right. actually burns the fat. And then we start with breakfast with a healthy meal, light, healthy meal with protein, with complex carb, with high fat, healthy fat, of course, no mm -hmm. bacon, uh, no sausages, no hot dogs, uh, no cats. Uh, <laughs> we don't eat any of this. <laughs> McDonald's, uh, a McDonald's burger. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Anytime you go to eat burger and French fries, you have to look at how they prepare this, how they made the French fries. Okay. They yes. put it in oil. It's either lard from the pork or vegetable oil. And by the way, just to let your viewers know, they never change this oil in the it's a big tank full of oil. It's just cool and, and they keep heating it. Now, what's happening when you keep heating the oil over and over again? Produce what? Free radicals. Yes, what yes. does free radicals mean? It's actually caused oxidative stress. It caused inflammation. So yes. every time you eat French fries, I guarantee you personally, you're gonna have inflammation 24 hours later, guaranteed. And then when you eat the KFC, when you eat the burgers, which is high fat and, and so on with the, it, it's not really the healthiest meal. I tell my clients to eat slow food, not fast food. Prepare your salads. Put, make sure that your salad dressing is not commercial. Right. Because you know what they put in the commercial salad dressing, right? Yeah. All of the vegetable oil, which is bad for us. So you have to have extra version cold pressed olive oil or coconut oil or uh, avocado oil or grapeseed oil, something healthy oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So we do not recommend any of the canola, the mazola, uh, all of the bad vegetable oils. These are really bad for us, yeah. particularly if you fry with them. Now, when you use them uh, in cold, it's not as dangerous as when you actually use them to fry with. When you start to fry with the um, canola and the mazola, then you break down the double bonds because I I'm sure you know that canola oil has 20 carbons, which is made from double bonds. It's called, actually, it's, it's produced something called erucic acid. And this erucic acid can cause inflammation. I mean, ask any scientist like myself about the danger of canola and erucic acid, and they will tell you. Okay, for the average person, do not just use canola oil. Uh, do not use any of the vegetable oil. So I invite all of your viewers and all of your listeners who are listening to us right now, if you have any vegetable oil, if you have any margarine, give it to a neighbor that you do not like or give it to <laughs> <laughs> Give it to your enemy. <laughs> uh, well, then they will like you because you gave them groceries. <laughs> I know. It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So get rid of anything that's corn, yes. maize, or mazola, or canola, or yeah. anything like that. Yes. You see, we call it uh, like the pharmacy, P H A R M A C Y. Pharmacy. It's a, from the farm, it's from the soil, not from the lab. Uh, like if you go to any pharmacy which sells drugs, then before you take any medication, like, you know, Ruth and Robert, some people think that aspirin is safe. It does not require prescription. Actually, let me tell you this. Aspirin can cause gastric bleeding. Aspirin today, if it was submitted back to Health Canada or the FDA, and I happened to work with both those organizations 20 years ago, right. it would not be approved. It would not be given the safety as OTC, over-the-counter medication, because it caused bleeding. How many people do you know that use Tylenol on a regular basis? Tylenol can affect the liver. It's been proven in science. It can cause hepatotoxicity. It wow. can destroy liver two and liver, uh, the, the metabolism, phase two metabolism and phase three metabolism. I don't want to get into science here. It's called right. glucuronide formation and, and oxidation. Yeah. For the scientists, uh, all of the nerds on, on the call now, they will understand what I'm talking about. Right. So it will actually interfere with liver function. Astaminophen or Tylenol is not as safe as people think. And people, I have some clients who are in their 20s, female clients, during their period, they take Advil. They don't take right. one or two. You take six Advil. On the bottle, it says do not take more than two. Advil or ibuprofen affect the heart. It can cause actually tachycardia or arrhythmia. I think the FDA should put this on the label because it's OTC. People take it without prescription. And uh, actually, I asked this person, why you take six? He said, I'm in so much PMS pain. I cannot even go to work. So I have to take six just to, go, to be able to go to work. I said, you know what? It's better not to go to work. That's not right. To, instead of taking six Advil, I'm going to end up with uh, tachycardia, arrhythmia. Or heart attack because right. see over the counter medications they are not safe as you think they are you have to look at again if you just go to google there's actually a new searching uh, engine called google uh, I'm, I'm sure you're listening about it <laughs> just type estaminophen or tylenol type advil or ibuprofen type asa or aspirin 
Side effects. Could you believe Ruth and Robert? You're gonna get one and a half to two pages long side effect on each one of them. Do you, have you ever tested or or, or researched this yourself? No. I have looked at uh, Tylenol, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you can see here, some people say take Tylenol if you have fever, if you have this, if you have uh, pain, if you have, okay, before you take Tylenol, find out what other things that you can do in terms of getting rid of the pain or the fever or anything else. By the way, when somebody have a fever, this is our natural body to produce unfavorable environment for the virus or for the bacteria mm -hmm. because it's called hyperthermia. Yes. So we go from 37 Celsius to 38 Celsius or from 98 Fahrenheit for the friends in the US to 99 or 100 Fahrenheit. This is our natural mechanism yeah. to actually help the body to kill those offenders, whether it's bacteria or virus. Yeah. Now, when you take antipyretic like aspirin, you try to reduce this fever, you're actually fighting your immune system, your own immune system. It's wow. not, like, let it go through 24 hours. Of course, except in, in a case of meningitis. I don't want to get into the detail of this. It, yeah. it's, so that, that's, it's, that's of course, true. if it goes to 40 or 41, then we have to take an intervention there, obviously. But 38 or 39 or, or 99 or 100 Fahrenheit, it's not an alarm. Let it go. Within 24 hours, the offender will be gone. And that will be the end of it. So th that's that's what I recommend for people. Instead of rushing to the aspirin, rushing to the Tylenol or the Advil to control that particular. So please, before you take it, just look at the risk versus benefits. Well, and then you can suggest yourself. then for if they have a lot of pain, what would you suggest? Okay. The pain actually is our friend, not our enemy. When you have a pain, the body is telling you something is wrong. Yeah. Let's say that you wake up in the morning with stiff neck. Okay, maybe your posture during sleep, maybe you slept on your stomach. The stomach is the worst place to sleep. It ruins your spine, it ruins your neck. So from C1 to C7, the, seven, the, the first seven vertebrate from your neck, it, it's gonna get damaged by sleeping on your stomach. Wow. wow. From, from, from T1 to T12, it's gonna be actually curved because when you sleep on your stomach, you're actually gonna have the curvature. And right. then from L1 to L5, the lumbar, is gonna be affected. So the first thing when you have pain, when you wake up in the in any morning with pain, find out what did you sleep. I recommend sleeping on the back or mostly on the right side. Sometimes on the left side is okay, but mostly right side about 80%, 20% on the, on the left side because you have the heart and you have all of the other organs there, but never on your stomach. And then of course, bedtime is 11 p.m. Bedtime always 11, not 2 a.m., not 3 a.m., <laughs> our friend Robert Moore who is sleeping at 3 a.m. 3, 3 and he saw me by the way I was bugging Robert Moore for almost you know that for three years to see me yeah, and yeah. He said, I'm so busy so busy so I, I saw him only 10 days ago I know Robert Moore, I hope he's listening right now I can share his story <laughs> yes. he goes to bed at 11 o'clock 11 p.m. and he guess you never you never ever believe this Ruth and Robert he did not touch junk food for the 10 days since I've seen him I know that's and we're amazing. really glad about that. That's Robert is, is like a he, he, he actually I think he has a shares in McDonald's and KFC and and all of the, uh, Wendy. Uh, I think he, he, he supports them financially. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but he stopped eating all of those junk foods. Period. He, he said, he, I'm eating like a rabbit, like you told me. What a rabbit eats vegetables, salad, and, stuff. and he felt much. When you see Robert now, when next time you come to Toronto. You're gonna see a different version of Robert J. Moore. Yes, he will tell you that, and <laughs> you can do with him. Yeah. Uh, he's now becoming my hero, not just my co-author and my publisher. Anyway, so lifestyle medicine is so important. So, getting back to your answer to your questions, I did not forget your questions about the pain. Yeah. Sometimes all we need to do is simple stretching. So, when you wake up in the morning with with neck pain, all you gotta do is just basically certain stretches like this, five times like that five times counterclockwise five times full uh you know like like this and yes. then just next stretch like i showed you when i saw you in toronto next stretch like this yeah. okay that will get rid of the pain without any side effect there's zero side effect okay now if somebody have persistent pain for two days or three days to come and see me i do the bicranial the bicranial treatment is non-invasive if all fails, they can see their own chiropractor, they can see their own pain specialist, but I do a combination of treatment, Ruth and Robert. As you know, I do electroacupuncture, I do bicranial, I do the biofeedback to spot the exact 
source of the pain. Where is the pain come from? And once you find the root cause of the pain, then you can deal with it without any need for OTC or NSAID. Yeah. OTC is over-the-counter medication, and SAID stands for non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin, Tylenol, and Advil. But there is no need for that. Don't rush for your medicine cabinet for those when you have pain. Find right. the exact cause of your pain because your pain is your friend, not your enemy. So once you the pain is the body is telling you something is wrong. My maybe when you're when you're sitting, you're slouching like this. So you have to have to improve your posture. Mm -hmm. some, some of my clients they go like this and then when they are my age they have scoliosis because their posture now it, the, the spine is curved right right so you gotta watch your, your posture when you're awake and you gotta watch your posture when you sleep it's very important to have so that's why i recommend sleeping on the back and also on the on the right side so this is very important so we gotta find the cause always find the root cause if somebody comes to me with hypertension what causes hypertension they do not need advil uh, they do not need altase or norvasc or hydrochlorothiazide any of the pain uh, or the blood pressure medications you do not need painkillers by the way if somebody taking painkillers like morphine or percocet or oxycontin uh, you have to be aware of the potential addiction and potential side effect which is enormous now we're talking about it like if somebody taking the two uh, narcotic for pain expect for them to be addicted to this medication for a long long time yeah and if you actually stop it they're gonna have withdrawal symptoms it's like any drug addict on on cocaine or or any of the other bad drugs seriously it's it's right. narcotic it's narcotic analgesic so it, it, it's just it actually trick the brain that there is no pain but the pain is the physical pain is still there but it'll numb the pain it'll deal with the symptom not the root cause I deal with the root cause, not the symptom. Now, if your uh, viewers are from Ontario, they should look at ratemds.com and they look for my ratings, how I handle the pain naturally, because I don't think your clients from British Columbia is going to come and fly uh, three and a half hours for, uh, or oh, actually it's four hours from British Columbia to. Yeah. Is this four hours from uh, Maybe Vancouver? Five, five from Vancouver. Yeah, five from Vancouver. They're not going to fly from Vancouver to Toronto five hours to come and see me for one treatment. That it's one hour. So. They better uh, actually uh, go on the website and see how I deal with it, uh, you know, and they can do it themselves. They don't have to fly at all. And they don't have to see me, period. Right. All of you viewers can deal with their own challenges naturally without having to see me. We do Zoom call. We do all of this stuff. And if they happen to be in Ontario, it's worth a while. Before they use Oxycontin or Percocet or Morphine or any of this medication, you should come and see me because we do not recommend that. Yes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about depression because so many yeah. people, are depressed right now because of the pandemic like it's like 40 percent yeah. higher than before and they all want to go to medication immediately what's your take on depression okay depression sometimes it, it's like it's a lifestyle uh, imbalance in the brain from yeah. something called serotonin something called uh, GABA something called dopamine all of these brain neurotransmitters which actually connect to, to the thoughts and connect to the all of the sense of well-being in the brain becomes yeah. imbalanced Right. And sometimes when people are under stress, they have something called cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone that produced when they were under stress. So during the COVID-19, when they listen to the media, which is um, basically, it's all bad news. It's all about uh, creating phobia yes. and fear for the population. In fact, when you hear the news and when you, when you actually have this fear and, and anxiety, you're going to actually suppress your immune system. And once your immune system is suppressed, you're going to actually more have a chance to attract not just the COVID-19, any virus right any any sars virus from the sars family or from the corona family like this covid 19 is part of the sars i was in charge of the uh, quarantine officer uh, with health canada in 2002 with the sars when we had this problem across every airport in canada across every seaport even yeah. cruise ship had this and it had also the norwalk i was in charge of that whenever have any lockdown uh, we had only one quarantine for cruise ship which has three cases of norwalk in 48 hours, Ruth and Robert was actually resolved. 48 hours, everybody was get out of the quarantine. The ship went back to shore and everything was fine. No problem. So oh. we didn't have this uh, thing like what we have right now, uh, which is really strange because in quarantine, you only quarantine sick people, not healthy people. I'm not going to talk about this now because <laughs> I don't, don't want to create any, any controversy. But uh, uh, I think we, what we have right now, what we're going through right now, like it is something I just cannot understand as scientists. What is the whole big deal is about? 
If somebody actually activates their immune system right there in the thymus, right in the middle of your chest, and then they take extra vitamin D, 2,000 I, I uh, sorry, 10,000 IU, vitamin D3, and they take 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, and they take 50 milligrams of zinc, their immune system is going to be fine, and there is no need to worry about COVID-19. Even if you have it, you can reverse it. There is no need for a ventilator. There is no need to actually worry about, uh, there is no need to take any uh, flu shots because the flu shots has actually mercury that suppress immune system, thimerosal, okay? And there is no need for flu shots. And by the way, the death rate from COVID-19 is as equal to the influenza. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack about this because they're going to actually put in the headline news in newspaper in British Columbia and Ontario. A former Health Canada scientist said that the death rate from the COVID-19 is same as the influenza. I can actually substantiate that by telling you. In Taiwan, they only have less than 12 deaths from 24 million people. This is documented. You can look at Johns Hopkins website and this is documented there. In Iceland, the same thing too. Okay, so how could this be a pandemic? I think diabetes type 2, diabetes type 3, diabetes is the biggest pandemic we should deal with right now. Right. There's, mm -hmm. death, there's more death from influenza, there's more death from heart attack than it is from COVID-19 because unfortunately, uh, Ruth and Robert, in death certificates in Italy and other countries, if somebody died from diabetes or from cancer, from any other causes, they said that we tested for positive for COVID-19, it's COVID-19 death. Right. And it's been proven in the States. We have doctors actually quitting their, 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 their role in the hospital because they actually forced them to write on the death certificate, COVID-19 death. They actually quit their job because of this. It's a tragedy. It's, been doc it's, it's, it's all on the internet. Anyway. All of this stuff about COVID-19 deaths is if in death certificate exaggerated. The PCR test for testing is, is all not quite accurate. So testing is inaccurate. The death certificate is inaccurate. That's why the whole number is inflated. And the media actually take this now and, and uh, blow on it out of proportion. Uh, you, you understand who owns the media and you understand about the political aspect. I'm not going to get into this politics at all. I'm a scientist. I'm just going to focus on science. COVID-19 can be reversed using your own hair dryer. If you have a strep throat, if you have throat, just put your hair dryer there. It will not withstand the temperature from the hair dryer. It, if you drink uh, lots of herbal tea, heat, uh, like heated uh, tea, yeah. Yeah. If you use thermotherapy that I recommended. I actually published last week a paper in the medical literature, the thermotherapy uh, using the amethyst biomat destroy COVID-19 by almost 95%. So basically, it's in the amethyst biomat, which produce thermotherapy, infrared heat, but if you have if you have one of those necklaces that actually sits on your thymus that produce infrared, that you know what I think uh, every government should produce to every woman one of those amethysts for free uh, amethyst pendant you know the yes and then we don't have to have lockdown and then if they give them uh, how much is vitamin D eight dollars nine dollars how much is vitamin C five bucks how yes. much is zinc three dollars and then we get, do you know how much the government of Canada spent so far two hundred and fifty billion. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, and how much the U.S. spent and how many unemployed people came from this uh, pandemic or, oh, sorry, pandemic. It's not pandemic. It's, it's not planned. It's, it's pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, come on. Like, if you have, if you have, a P, if you have uh, just one PhD, you'll understand what's going on. You don't, like, come, well, let's be awake, guys. Come on. Turn off the news and just follow my advice here. And I don't care how much flack I'm going to get out of this. Right. But seriously, let's, let's get real with this. What do you say to do about the, thy the thymus here? It basically, massage the thymus, which makes produce your T cells and NK cells, the T lymphocytes. And yeah. by activating the thymus, by doing this, you actually make your thymus stronger to make your immune system stronger, to make you resistant to any, not just COVID-19, to any virus. Yeah. By right. the way, we have something called virome. We have something called microbiome. Microbiome is the bacteria that actually, a bacteria that exists in our, in our gut. And uh, we have virus exists in our guts that, that actually we, we live with them. We are 95% bacteria and 5% human. <laughs> we can leave those bacteria and the viruses happy in our gut. Because if they are not pathogenic, if they don't produce any disease, we need them. How do we keep them happy? We eat fermented food like kimchi, like sauerkraut, like kombucha. And then we actually uh, take probiotics, which keeps this friendly bacteria happy. Because gut health, as you said, is brain health. Yeah. So by taking the good probiotic, make sure before you take any probiotics, make sure it's heat resistant and acid resistance. Because 90% of the stuff I see on the market, they die right on the stomach. They hit the HCL, hydrochloric acid, 
and goodbye. 99.99% they, they get killed. So make sure that the probiotics that you take in acid resistant and heat resistant. If they say keep it in the fridge, that means they're losing 10% per week from their number that they actually put. That's why you see something produced like 20 billion, uh, 30 billion. Uh, I've seen 100 billion. You do not need 100 billion. All what you need is 100 billion, actually 10 billion surviving in the gut. That's all you need to produce and propagate to actually uh, make the other healthy bacteria happier. Once okay. you have happy bacteria, you have no bloating, you have no weight gain, you have no diabetes, you have no dementia. Seriously, if you have gut health, you can reverse everything. This is uh, this is a science. I'm not just talking. It's called functional medicine, which is now taught at Cleveland Clinic and Harvard, which I happen to work with them. I work with Johns Hopkins, Harvard Clinic, Johns Hopkins, Mayo Clinic. I collaborate with them on the International Open Conference in 2015 in Chicago. We did all of this work together collectively. And we talked about how thermotherapy can help with this. We introduced the natural prostate supplement that I actually invented, which is patented at that conference. I did two talk and it was just it was the attention of every doctor that i found they were so interested in how to prevent pain through thermotherapy how to reduce the prostate cancer or prostate hyperplasia through this natural prostate formula and we do we did work it's all published it's proven and it's it's the efficacy is there so i believe in prevention yeah. rather than intervention and i believe in self-care rather than crisis care and I believe that if you're afraid from the news about the COVID-19, please do not be afraid. Uh, I can send you actually a link to a doctor from Texas who actually treated his COVID patients with something simple like I'm talking about, the, the vitamin D, the vitamin C, and the zinc. Also, he used uh, something that he used for asthma, which is a drug called Pulmocort, that to reduce the respiratory infection before they go into ventilation. Yeah. And he had 90% success rate. Why would you go? Why would you give somebody an ICU ventilation, and they almost gonna pretty well die from this kind of procedure? Like seriously, you can. What's vitamin D and uh, what's the side effect of vitamin D, vitamin C, and, and zinc, or using uh, colloidal silver, or or using things like oregano oil? These are all been used for centuries, centuries. Uh, you know, it's not just like a, it's a new fad, okay? And vitamin D, by the way, ten thousand is not toxic dose. I'm a toxicologist. The toxic dose vitamin D is 250,000 over three years daily. And the person who took it, he did actually he felt very good. He did not die. There's not a single death in toxicological literature about vitamin D above 250,000. Wow. I'm not recommending 250,000 dose. I'm only recommending 10,000. So because doctors recommend only 1,000. Unfortunately, they did not study uh, that much in terms of prevention or in terms of nutrition as much as I did with three doctors, three masters, and three bachelors. I'm not here to arm wrestle any doctors here. I'm here to tell you what I've learned in four decades, in 40 years of research with 250 papers published with all of the stuff that I've done in my life. You so, have done so much, Dr. Grant. Tell us about some foods that we need to avoid. And I'm thinking about wheat. I'm thinking about dairy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and first before that, because you talked about probiotics, what yes. do you recommend for a really good probiotic? Or do you do any recommendations? Read, read on the label, it's acid resistant and it's uh, temperature resistant. As you know, Ruth and Robert, I do not like to recommend any brand or yeah. any kind of companies. I do not like to do that because I use myself like five different brands and five different companies. So right. I do not like to go and say, well, this is the only brand, uh, it's the only company. If I, did, if I say that, obviously I'm wrong. There yeah. are other good brands out there. But whenever it says refrigerate, do not use that. Forget right. it. Whenever it says it's not as resistant, don't even waste your twenty-five or thirty-five dollars on it. It's just going to be done in the stomach here. It's supposed to be released in the small intestine, on large intestine, to be effective. But if they die in the HCL in the stomach, forget it. It's not going to work. Okay. So just make sure it says on the label there: acid resistant, yeah, heat resistant. If that's the okay. case, that's fine. And to answer Robert's questions, I do not consume. I do not recommend to my clients any cow's milk or cheese. I know I'm going to have lots of enemies now on the, on this call. They're going to say, oh my God, I, I love my milk. I, I drink three glasses of milk and I eat the cheese. Okay, please listen to me. Yes, let's cow's talk milk about Today cheese. is not the same cow's milk we had 100 years ago. Mm. It is pasteurized, HGST, which means with the high temperature, it's actually, <laughs> you destroy all of the natural stuff that exists, the cholesterol in the milk. With the hormones added, bovine hormones added in milk, with antibiotics added to the cows, milk becomes very, very acidic. In fact, I'm going to say this in your show, 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a lot of flack about this. Cow's milk cause osteoporosis. Cause milk is acidic. It can actually deplete your calcium and magnesium from your bones. I know I'm gonna get a lot of scientists to dispute this with me, but okay, let's go and arm wrestle on this. Okay, <laughs> because almond milk, coconut milk from any plant based or cashew milk or uh, oat milk, any other things from plant based, they are alkaline in nature. They actually prevent and reverse osteopenia and osteoporosis. Mm. But cow's milk, because of all of the stuff is in it, a dairy association is not going to like me. They're going to actually say bad things about me. They're going to dig some dirt about me. By the way, I'm security three clearance. Uh, you know, uh, like just like Robert, he's the RCMP officer. They have to check all my records from birth <laughs> until okay. they hire Go. And you're not going to find any dirt they want about that. <laughs> They're not going to find any. Yeah. Seriously, no criminal record, nothing like that. But seriously, uh, cow's milk and cheese is unfit for human consumption. So I'm, I'm very serious about this. So uh, I, I'm that, that's how strong I am about it because if you actually consume cow's milk and cheese and produce mucus, that means your body producing your own resistance against casein, milk protein, against lactose, which is a milk sugar. Yes. Uh, some people are lactose intolerant. They cannot actually take that lactose from milk. But the majority of people have casein intolerance that they cannot take milk, they produce mucus. Mm. And by the way, if you find somebody who says, I cannot get rid of the addiction to cheese, the cheese and the milk has something called casomorphine that can cause addiction to those products. And casomorphine is uh, it's almost as addictive as alcohol and nicotine for, for cigarettes. Wow, that's such a wow. And I'm sure anyone listening right now has yeah. never heard that. No. So, it's so why don't we just go to from, from cow's milk to simple almond milk? And by the way, you don't have to buy it commercially. I'm not here to support commercial uh, uh, you know, coconut milk or almond milk. You can make it at home. One glass, uh, one cup of uh, almond three cups of uh, of water you put it in a blender you can peel it you can peel the almonds if you want or you can have it skin on you put a couple dates a couple natural vanilla flavor you mix it and you strain it if you want it becomes like how much is a cup of almond robert and, and ruth how much is a cup of almond Two <laughs> four, four right. liters of almond milk right so, if you complain about the cost of almond milk because it's not quite commonly used now so it's very but as soon as everybody uses now almond milk coconut milk becomes commercial like cow's milk it's going to be cheaper than cow's milk eventually within yeah. within five to ten years it's going to be cheaper but now you can make it at home you don't have to go outside and buy it and oh. by the way if you like chocolate almond milk you can add carob or you can add cocoa you can add cocoa or carob to it it becomes chocolate if you like uh, uh, vanilla you can add vanilla if you like strawberry you can add fresh strawberry to the mix and make it strawberry uh, okay. that, sounds, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> it can do anything you want at home, hundred percent. Yes. So what, what do you say about the almond milk and the coconut milk that you buy in the store, the cashew milk? Is that okay? It, it, it's all, it's all right, but sometimes they add in it something called carrageenan gum that makes it thicker. Yes. And some some people have toward they have allergies toward that, but it's it's not that toxic as the hormones in cow's milk or the antibiotics. It's a natural gum. It's it's called the carrageenan. And uh, if you can find something natural, the best way is to just make it at home. Yeah. Actually, save money, and then you know what you have in it, okay? And yeah. you can add to your coffee. You can drink it. You can you can make actually cheese out of it. You can make yogurt out of it. You can make uh, almond yogurt. You can make coconut yogurt. You don't have to have the commercial store stuff. Do not use commercial yogurt from a store, especially if it has the uh, the fruits, because they add aspartame to it. I do not recommend any artificial sweeteners. Please stay away from aspartame. Stay away from all, all of the other artificial sweeteners. Only use stevia or monk fruit or um, th that's my favorite, stevia. Stevia is my favorite. It's all natural, zero calorie sweetener that gets rid of the sugar habits. And as you mentioned before, stay away from flour. Stay away from sugar. Sugar is the next pandemic. Yeah. Addiction in sugar, which causes so much stuff. And I'm not talking about sugar in pop. I'm not talking about sugar in bread or sugar in rice or sugar sugar in juices like commercial juice has high fructose corn syrup yeah which has been correlated with diabetes the higher the the, the all of the use of high fructose corn syrup the higher the chance of diabetes one of my dearest clients uh, i think she's on the show right now her name is liz dry she has mm -hmm. her own talk show she yeah. brought me her dad with 30 medications about yeah. i think it was two months ago or two and a half months ago right i told them not to stop any medications i do not tell all my clients to stop any medications just change your diet i told them to eat sweet potato and they, when they bake it they cut it and put uh, you put the cinnamon in it and they take the chromium with it too because chromium cinnamon and sweet potato actually reverse 
all of this type 2 diabetes and also type 3, which is dementia. I'll talk about it in a second here. Liz did this. Liz actually and her dad is are my hero, but actually the actual hero is her mom. Her mom is all natural. She did not like all of those meds that cause him to have uh, like diabetic ulcers. It, ha it, it has lots of... Oh. He had... He, had uh, he was doing lots of stuff. Now he has of all meds. In fact, if Liz on the, on the call, she can yeah. go on and make some comments yeah. uh, now without meds. She brought her husband last Friday to see me at the clinic, Johnny, and uh, he is very skeptical. Actually, the most skeptical person in her family is her daughter. Her teenage daughter is so skeptical. She actually called me the quack doctor. <laughs> <laughs> How can you get a black doctor with three doctor degrees from Brooklyn's University all over the world? Anyway, I actually, she, although she did not actually agree, and she told her mom that doctor is, is out, out to lunch. Anyway, <laughs> uh, she actually followed some of my advice, and she's felt much better. Liz is feeling much better. Her husband feeling much better. Her dad is feeling much better. Her mom is feeling much better. Uh, we need thousand Liz out there. Yeah. Not in Ontario. Not in British Columbia. Not in Canada. Across the U.S., across the Caribbean, across Europe, all over the world, because we're here to deliver wellness to humanity i'm writing this book with the uh, the upcoming wellness series i hope you can be part of this with me yeah to help people to get to understand how we implement wellness how we implement prevention i'm not i don't want any fame i don't want i've written books with les brown brian tracy uh, you know you Martin, you Hansen. I've, I've done all of this i don't want any more fame in the next 30, uh, if God give me another 25 or 30 years more, I want to actually help humanity to reverse diabetes, to reverse blood pressure, to reverse heart attack. I do not want to see any teenagers become orphaned at age 18, right. losing their mom, like yeah. I did, and, and wondering what are they going to do you know, for the rest of their lives, having these bad genes and, and from parents and grandparents. It just hurts me to see somebody, teenagers, losing their mom at this age. Seriously, it's just like a putting a knife in my heart. I, I'm here to talk about wellness, to prevent any disease. So talking about type three diabetes, I was the first scientist 25 years ago at the World Organization of Financial Medicine Conference to coin type three diabetes as the new dementia. And scientists were looking at me and said, what, how dementia can correlate to, to sugar level? I said, I've seen for my clients, anybody who have diabetes, they have pre-dementia. So I looked at this and I found out does any Insulin resistance can affect dementia, and the answer was yes, that's 25 years ago. Currently, I'm currently doing a study on dementia, helping clients to recover from type 2 diabetes, type 3 diabetes, which is dementia. And once they normalize the insulin resistance, they normalize their short-term memory and long-term memory using some natural ways, natural method. I already told you a couple of them, sweet potato, chromium, cinnamon, vanadium. They use thermotherapy, and I have now a new device called vibration therapy and sound therapy like sound therapy owns like a tuning forks yeah Our vibration therapy is to actually send the blood flow to the brain to oxygenate that brain if you do have any clients who have dementia ask them to contact me it doesn't matter where they live i can work with them via zoom or via this the new thing that you just on right now stream yard. stream yard the stream yard this is the second time i i used yesterday with uh with Bella. With Dilla, and I used today, it's the first time I used that, but it looks like it's actually better than Zoom. It's, it's amazing. Wow. amazing. Here today yeah, hi, Della. I see you, you see you in the comments and there. Hi, okay, well, yeah, Della, oh, Della is my superhero. Cool. Della has the same mission and vision and position I have, MVP. Mission, vision, and position. Through her talk show, she want to have now a series of 10 shows to tell people about how to prevent this disease. And instead of waiting for it to happen, why do we have to wait for top three dementia? Uh, sorry, type 3 diabetes, which is dementia. There is no drugs available there to, to deal with it. We can deal with it now. We can prevent it now before it happens. As early as we can. So when, whenever you see the first sign of forgetfulness, short-term memory, we can deal with it right now to prevent. We can actually help type 1 diabetes, type 2, and type 3. Also, there's another diabetes called type 1 and a half. I'm not going to get into it right now. <laughs> De 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 we want to have 20 shows. <laughs> <laughs> we can deal with any kind of without any metformin. Metformin wow. has been declared by CDC that it can cause cancer. So what do you want? Diabetes or cancer? Seriously. Better choice. Very bad choice. And doctors, by the way, okay, I, I'm not gonna get into this right now. But you know what? I will get into it. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I don't I don't care how many flags. By the way, I did 10 books with all of the top doctors in Canada and the US. Yes. But all of them are integrative. None of them are, are five minutes a pill pusher. Okay. 
Okay. Doctors have the oath, Hippocratic oath like me, natural doctor, have over it. Do no harm. Now, Ruth and Robert, how many doctors in, in British Columbia and in Ontario know that metformin can cause cancer? I would say 9.9, let's say 0.1% who do not treat in the literature from CDC. Okay. So they know that and yet they prescribe it. Is this do no harm? No. Now, how many doctors know that Viox, which was banned, same drug as Celebrax, which is currently prescribed for inflammation? For those of you who are doctors on the audience, Celebrax is Cox stone inhibitor. You know that. It has the same effect as Viox. It can cause heart attack. So Viox has been banned because Merrick had right now almost like a 25 billion lawsuits against people who had heart attack using Viox. Wow. How come doctors now do not tell people who have Celebrax, be careful with the heart attack or, or, or changing the cardiovascular function of the heart because it's Cox2 inhibitor. It's the same thing as, it's identical drug. It's like a, a mirror image of each other. We call it in chemistry, cis and trans. It's like a mirror image. Okay, so uh, do no harm. How many doctors know that chemotherapy can do harm and they still keep using chemotherapy? Please, there's other way, natural way, like thermotherapy can reverse cancer. Uh, DCA therapy, Dr. Khan is my co-author in the H3 book. He has actually something called DCA therapy and he's been warned by the Medical Association of Ontario not to use DCA therapy, only use a chemotherapy. Otherwise, his life, medical license is going to be suspended. Wow. Come on. Wow. He does not do any harm for patients. He does not use chemotherapy. And he said, I'd rather lose my license than lose a patient for chemotherapy. He's a brave he's superhero. Sure. That is Our uh, mm -hmm. listeners like Della and, and like Lizzie and all of the other, uh, my colleagues who are listening on the call right now, they can verify what, what I'm telling you is scientifically valid or not. Yeah. If it's not, message me, email me, tell me I have done 250 papers and go ahead and arm wrestle me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're gonna win and if not then i'm just gonna get robert to help me he's a former rcmp officer okay? <laughs> <laughs> well wow wow you have given us so much information i just want to say to our viewers right now and our listeners if you have a question right now please put it in the chat because dr grant is willing to answer questions yes he answers questions on the spot but just right now i want to recap a little bit if you're you just want to improve your immune system, take 10,000 units of vitamin D daily with 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C and 50 milligrams of zinc every day, and that's to boost your immune system. Gorilla stuff, yeah, exactly. And no. please get out in the sun. One hour in the sun will help you because yeah. you can actually have your own sunshine vitamins. Right, okay, so that's really important, not only to boost your immune system, but it's important for your your yeah. mental health, like depression, that's something that's antidepressant, right? Uh, I do not recommend any antidepressants, to be no. honest with you. We recommend something natural for people who have depression. The first thing I recommend is laughter, because laughter actually produces serotonin, produces GABA in the brain. It's just like uh, laugh about anything, okay? So seriously, laughter is number one. Number two, they can use something uh, that's, uh, it's, it's been proven in natural medicine for many, many years, something called Griffonia seed. Now, Griffonia seed actually up uh, and take the serotonin, and so is St. John's wort, which improves serotonin and improve actually the production of melatonin. Now, because we have lots of stress in our day-to-day -day life, and because we have lack of sleep, our pineal gland, the one gland here between your between your ears, right between your, your eyes right here, this yeah. pineal gland, get calcified from fluoride in the water and fluoride and other things. And it, it can actually, when it gets calcified, it can cause problem with melatonin and serotonin and it can cause depression. So I recommend for people to actually tap on the pineal gland like this, tapping, and also massaging the pineal gland to be able to produce more melatonin, particularly before you go to bed. So this pineal gland here is your, it's called your third eye. Very important. If you, in fact, tap on the on this pineal gland and tap on your thymus, not only you're going to boost the immune system, but you're going to actually, exactly, you're going you're to actually stimulate the pineal gland to produce more melatonin, which is good for depression. Did you know that melatonin actually prevent depression? No, that's because, that because, because it produces healthy sleep. People who have depression cannot sleep. And they sleep longer than the average person and they wake up, they are, they are tired. They did not get their REM sleep. Why? Because they take the Xanax, they take the Prozac, they take amitriptyline. I've seen clients who have autoimmune like fibromyalgia and MS and lupus. And the first thing doctors recommend is antidepressants. Yes. They have depression. Or they, they may have depression because of their pain, but they have, they, it's an autoimmune. It's from, from here. Yeah. So when you give them Prozac or you give them amitriptyline, ask any 
person that you know who have fibromyalgia say what drugs are you taking they're gonna tell you amitriptyline prozac or xanax okay or other antidepressants like valium or any of the other stuff available that does not actually solve their autoimmune disease so i help him to actually get rid of the autoimmune by stimulating the thymus by stimulating the pineal gland by actually giving them something like resveratrol which is an antioxidant resveratrol from from red wine do not go and drink a whole bottle of wine to get resveratrol because it's a very small amount of resveratrol in red wine. You only need two ounces, two, two ounces of red wine. I told this to one of my Italian clients, just take two ounces three times a week. He came back after three months, said, Doc, I'm following all my advice. I'm drinking two bottles three times a week. I said, bottles? I said, ounces. Two ounces, not two bottles <laughs> of red wine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> two bottles. <laughs> two ounces, not two bottles. Okay, so... Okay. By helping people with the, who have autoimmune, by helping people with depression, naturally, they recover, believe it or not, 60 days, 90 days, no need for any antidepressants. And if you know any clients who have MS, fibromyalgia, go to academyofwellness.com, which is listed there, under fibromyalgia or MS, any autoimmune. If they read the blog, they're going to be able to do it themselves. There's no need for to see me at all. If they want to see me through Zoom, okay, if they actually finish the Wellness IQ, on this website and then they send me a text or email as i mentioned to della's um, voice yesterday i'll do the zoom consultation or the the stream yard uh, consultation for them for free wow uh, this is a gift from you uh, from me to you guys because oh, wow. you know, thank you my wellness ambassador like della like lizzie like all of my other clients uh, i want to help people i want to help humanity it's not about money here so but we have we have some questions here and yes. the first one is about allergies yeah. Uh, say okay this is from actually from my son i've had allergies this year for the first time in my life it's making very hard to do activities that i want to do but i don't want to take allergy meds every morning so i don't know what to do and i don't know what's causing them like itchy okay. stuff he knows what does he do actually he answered his own questions right in the question <laughs> don't take the allergy meds <laughs> not only that he said he does not know what is the root cause of his allergy? That's his first homework. If somebody have asthma, find the root cause of the asthma. If somebody have allergy, find the root cause of this allergies. Once you find the root cause, you do not need Allegra, you do not need any of the antihistamine, you do not need chlorotriptyl because this can affect the liver. It can, it, it may give you a symptomatic relief from the allergies, but at what expense? Your liver, right? Your right. gallbladder, your kidney. Do you want to ruin your kidney because you take an allergy uh, um, uh, over the counter medications? Any medication has side effect. So please, your son should listen to his mom, listen to Ruth, listen to Robert by finding out the root cause of the allergy. If it's pollen, stay away during the seasonal changes. If it's cats or dogs, stay away from pets. If it's uh, anything into with X, Clorox, Javax, Windex, Tylex. Stay away from these. These are toxic. It causes cancer anyway, not just allergy. It causes cancer. You, you, you don't want to have any in your house, anything into the X. Anything into the X is very bad for you, except sex. That's the only thing that's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about we live in an area where there's a lot of sage? Of course, anything can trigger allergies. His homework is to find what is the root cause. He actually said this in his own question i don't know what's my root cause anybody who have asthma or allergy i tell them find the root cause find exactly what caused you the allergies you know that's my first recommendations i have to go and plug my computer here okay this again it's only for one hour so i put it here okay i'm good how do they find the root cause dr grant uh, uh, trial and error whenever he gets the sneezing when he gets itchy eyes he knows what caused the allergies he, he will know he can find out exactly what caused the allergy he has to be his own detective detective work and Robert is good at this. He's a former RCMP officer. He can do the detective work for <laughs> Okay, we have a question from Debbie. Debbie says, I have RA, rheumatoid arthritis, and exercise is hard. How can I get my cholesterol down? Elevated cholesterol and elevated triglycerides run in her family. Very easy and very simple, Debbie. Uh, cholesterol is never a problem, unless if it's the LDL is very, very high. By the way, there are, there are three kinds of cholesterol, the good, the bad and the ugly. The good one called HDL. And the best way to remember this, it starts with H, is a happy cholesterol. The bad one is called LDL. It's a lousy cholesterol. And the ugly one called VLDL, the very lousy cholesterol. 
<laughs> you don't want to have uh, too much LDL and VLDL and triglyceride. You got to find the root cause. Why do you have high LDL? It's your diet, lifestyle medicine. You know what? I encourage every one of the viewers and listeners to take my course. It's on 11 assignments, online course on IM, FM, LM, integrated medicine, functional medicine, lifestyle. As soon as they finish this course, they'll be able to actually treat high LDL high VLDL and high triglyceride naturally without statin. Please, please, I beg you, do not take statin medications because the risk exceeds the benefits. So right. the first step is to eat healthy food, to take omega-3, not omega-6. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. Omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. So if you use oils, it has omega-6, it causes inflammation. You got to find out what causes your RA. It's, you you got you to dig deep to find what causes your rheumatoid arthritis, what causes the inflammation. There's so many ways. If you're, is Debbie from Ontario? Uh, I don't know where she's from, actually. If, if she's from Ontario, I can see her for half an hour, 45 minutes. Don't right. worry about the cost. Just, just come and see me, and then I'll help you with this. I'll, I'll find the root cause through the biofeedback. See, the biofeedback device, uh, I don't think you've seen it, Ruth or Robert. I don't think you've seen me. I, I'm going to book an appointment. Yes, and then once we actually do the biofeedback, I'll find out, is it the knee that has a problem? Is it the lower back? Is it the neck? Is it the wrist here? And then we deal with it with bacranial, with thermotherapy, with all of the natural stuff. I have so many ways to deal with it naturally, other than taking medications or doing any uh, knee replacement or hip replacement. <laughs> this stuff is the last, last, last resort. Debbie, Debbie. We can her naturally with this RA or, or, or OA, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, yes. Debbie from Indiana. So Debbie, all you have to do is go to www.academyofwellness.com right. and book your appointment with Dr. Grant. Yes. He'll, yep. see, he'll give you a half hour for free. So he yep. has done that for yep. us, which is absolutely fabulous. And Colin needs to do that as well to do that biofeedback. Yes. And so I have another question from Kim who lives in Kitchener. Okay. So close to you, but she has trouble staying a sleeping or staying asleep like she tries to go to bed early or she does the routine but she can't stay asleep and she's waking up so what can she do to boost her sleep okay very simple kitchener is only about an hour or so kitchener waterloo is about an hour from uh, from where i am in richmond hill uh, in toronto so she can always come and see me but here's what you need to do kim today okay before you go to sleep take a hot water bath with one handful of epsom salt this Epsom salt tends to actually relax the muscles and help you to achieve deeper REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. Second thing is you can actually try to spray melatonin liquid under your tongue, one milligrams of melatonin and griffonia seed and all of the St. John's wort to, to increase the length of the time that when you sleep, you have deeper sleep. Now, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go to the bathroom and then you have difficulty to go back to sleep, what you can do is do the five belly breath because all my clients, they breathe from the chest and the brain needs oxygen. So if she does the belly breath, she can resume back to sleep in no time at all. Just, she can keep doing the belly breath until she falls back to sleep. It's very simple. I did this to all my clients. Could you believe Ruth and Robert that 80% of my clients do not know how to breathe from deep sleep, uh, deep breathing from the belly, they breathe from the chest. Yes. And they breathe like somebody have asthma. Right. And when they breathe, I don't even hear it. So when I breathe, I like my, my belly here, you can see this, expand, and then you can hear me breathing. But the average person, I cannot hear him breathing, and they, they breathe from the chest. So yeah. the brain sometimes tell us, I need oxygen, but we're not listening. Right. And unfortunately, doctors do not teach belly breathing. And also hydration. Very, If you are fully hydrated, you're fully oxygenated, and your food is healthy, your alkaline pH, then the sleep becomes very much easier. Even if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're going to go back to sleep, you know, very quickly. Right. So because, because I'm 70, sometimes I wake up once or twice in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom because of, you know, every man at my age have enlarged prostate, right? But right. I go to the bathroom sometimes and the way back, I actually fall asleep on the way before even I hit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I go, I actually turn my brain uh, to go and come back and then in, instantly it's like a switch on and off. I, I have no problem. So she can actually teach her brain to do that through belly breathing. Belly so I, and then if you're in Kitchener, you can just uh, contact me and then I'll be very happy to see you or do Zoom call from Kitchener-Waterloo area and I'll be happy to see you. Okay, Kim? Yeah, she said thank you, Dr. Grant. 
And another uh, Gladys, she's around, she's in New York. Okay. Uh, in New York area. <clears throat> she wants to book an appointment with you as well. And so I think, I don't know if there's any more questions. If there's any more questions, put them in the chat right now. Did you have a question? Um, no, not right off. I think what we need to wrap it up here fairly soon. But uh, taking all your time, Dr. Grant. And we would really love to have another interview or two with you. And, and this time we'll try and get more people on. I don't know how many actually looking. There's 16 on right now. 16 so that's on. Good. And that's really good. And there's uh, we're going to put it up and there'll be a replay. But uh, this is information, as you are so well aware, that we need to get out there. And Ruth and I are totally committed to that as well. Health and fitness, health and fitness, faith and fitness. Those are our life uh, passion too, like like yours. So yes. we, we well, want to have you back on, and we'll do that very, very soon. We have one more question from Casey, and she says, is Epsom salts safe for toddlers? Because yes. she has Any a age. I was talking about the bath. Do not take it internally. Yeah, the bath. The bath, yes. But do not. if you take it internally, you're going to have diarrhea. Right. <laughs> yeah, she has a toddler who's 18 months and, and is is a very non-sleeper. So what can she do? Oh, She can just uh, cuddle with him in, in the bathtub for about 15 minutes. And once you come out, do not dry. Just air dry. So the Epsom salt will work overnight. Yeah. And it's, it's very, actually very healthy to actually calm the toddler who have ADD or who have hyperactivity. But the best way is not to use carbohydrates before. Sleep. Actually, I do not recommend simple carbohydrates anyway, because right. sugar interferes with the sleep, the, the deep REM sleep. Yeah. So cut back on your simple sugar. So if you give your toddler a lot of sugar, they're going to be hyperactive. So do not give your toddler any bread or any rice or pasta or any juices. Oh, fruit juices, by the commercial fruit, has high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Do not give your toddler any of those juices. Just give them water with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of baking soda, and a little bit of lime or lemon. Uh, or... Uh, uh, okay, lemon or lime, baking soda, and apple cider vinegar. The apple cider vinegar detox the body and help you to sleep much better because it's actually improved digestion and improved detox for the liver and the kidney and, and also the gallbladder. So that's what I recommend. Yes, it's very safe for toddlers, safe for any age. Even if you have a, a, a newborn baby, you can actually do a towel with Epsom salt and then they actually, if they are colicky, they put it on their stomach and it gets rid of the bloating and the gases. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it relaxes the body. Another question for you, and this is one. Uh, so there's the jury's out on this. It seems like, but how much sleep does an average uh, adult need in a nighttime? Or, or any? it depends on the age. It depends on the weight of the person. Uh, usually, uh, people who are like preteens, they need longer time to sleep than people who are teens. And as we age, we need less time to sleep. So in my case, I can tell you from from my own experience, six to seven hours for me. Are sufficient to get me to function 100%, but some people need the seven, eight hours to sleep. So it depends on your age, it depends on your weight, it depends on, on so many other factors, it depends on your diet, but no meal above and beyond 7 p.m. 7 p.m. is zip time. Yes. If you have a meal at 10 o'clock and you try to go to bed at 11 o'clock, good luck having any REM sleep, especially if it contains lots of heavy calorie, lots of starches, lots of sugar. Forget it. You're going to have erratic sleep. So 7 p.m. is shut down. The only thing you drink after 7 p.m. is water. That's it. But no no solid food. So uh, if you want to use a 7 a.m., 7 p.m. kind of mode for the intermittent fasting, fine. If you want to have a, a lunch, fine too. You can have just salads, nice healthy salads. And then the dinner is the lightest meal. So eat breakfast like a king or a queen, lunch like a prince or princess, or skip lunch altogether, and eat supper like a pauper. Somebody who's so poor, they don't have any, just eat like maybe a little bit of salads, okay? But if you eat supper like a, a king or a queen, and then you skip breakfast, my goodness, good luck to sleep. Uh, seriously, you're going to have a problem. And then if you go to a doctor and complain about lack of sleep, they give you sleeping pills, it makes things actually muddy and, and worse. It's, it's, it's going to be worse and worse and worse for sleep. Because sleeping pills do not address the root cause of the sleep function. They only right. suppress the symptoms. And they make you drowsy. When you wake up in the morning, you feel like you, you had uh, you had like alcohol. You feel like drunk. Yes. Please, do, do not. Because it has a rebound effect. On my website, by the way, there are 250 blogs. I expect all of your viewers and your listeners now, before they go to bed tonight, to read all of the 250 blogs. Each blog is only one hour. So... <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Just read the blog that retains your own particular situations, okay? 
Yeah. So I'll be happy to come back. You asked uh, Robert to come back twice. I, I, I'm happy to do that. Della asked me yesterday in her Della voice to ask 10 times. <laughs> if you ask and you shall receive. So uh, I'm here. Me too. And I'm so, here. Dr. Grant, do you do that bio feedback over Zoom or do you have to be in person for that? No, you have to be in person because, uh, yeah, in person is much better. We yeah. can do some treatment over Zoom, but it's, it's, it's not quite like when you're present with me. So next time you come to Toronto, God willing, I will see you and I'll give you both a private sessions by feedback session with me. Okay. Nice. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your advice, for all your input into our lives, into our health and wellness lives. Because you're welcome. And I look forward to come to your retreats in British Columbia. I love Kelowna. I, be, I lived actually in British Columbia in Vancouver for 10 years. Happy years in my life. Yeah. Except knows when it, uh, it rains in Vancouver every other day. Uh, but uh, in the Okanagan area, you live in Kelowna, right? Kamloops. Kamloops. Yeah, it's the, yes. it's the tail end of the Okanagan. Uh, it's actually much drier and it yeah. does not rain that much. It's uh, the mountain and, and I have been to so many places in the Okanagan area in my 10 years uh, in British Columbia. If Next time you, you plan a retreat, just invite me to come and then we can do the weight management, we can do the biofeedback, we can do the dementia, we can do all of the stuff for your clients there and we'll have lots of fun. And then I have a retreat actually happening in Ontario. If you are in the Ontario area, end of August, I'm going to Thornberry Royal Harbour Resort. It's on the website and I only have two spots left. So wow. the, first, the first two people who respond today. Uh, we'll have we'll take those two spots and it's all all the information on the website uh, uh thornberry is only like very close to um wasaga beach not a wasaga so no it's, it's about one hour north of richmond hill or yes. an hour and a half north of toronto if you live in kitchen waterloo area is about one hour and 15 minutes north okay uh, if you live in mississauga it's only less than an hour because you take highway uh, you take airport road it gets you right there to thornberry so it's a very nice place right on georgian bay you watch sunrise and sunset watch the water and we do uh, weight management. We do diabetes. We do we do cook our own meals, organic, healthy meals. We show you how to cook. We show you how to actually eat. And then we do the walking a mile a day. We they have a gym, and they have a water pool. And they ha we do the uh, the hot tub. We do the the sim swimming pool is bromine, not chlorine. There's no chlorine there. Okay, it's all healthy stuff. We, so after one week, you don't want to come back. You want to stay there longer. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, we'll do one in British Columbia very soon. Very soon we'll do one in British Columbia. Yes. Our retreat is well. right. So yes. that's awesome. When we can actually finally do it again, right? Uh, sure. Well, we will do it soon. Uh, soon this uh, pandemic, uh, I mean, pandemic is over. <laughs> it's going to be over soon. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Everyone's saying thank you. And so we appreciate your time, Dr. Grant. And we'll have you, we'll see you again on another program soon. Thank you so much, Ruth and Robert. You're real. The R and R happy couple team. R and R, the couple team. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Ruth. All the best. Bye bye. Take care.